So, a good question to ask. Who in here has heard of Gutenberg? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, Gutenberg started with a core focus. Um, uh, the core focuses were announced at the beginning of the year. That was going to be REST API, Customizer, and the editor. Gutenberg is, in short, the whole new publishing experience for WordPress. The editor is just stage one. After the editor comes customization and a move to bring HDI options such as a page builder. And with this combination, you'll be able to build complex, rich content all within WordPress without extra development or features that you'll then be able to build on to create these amazing experiences. So who actually makes Gutenberg? Well, as introduced, I'm the design lead and Matthias is the technical lead. But there's a whole host of different people contributing with different roles in a lot of different companies, with a lot of different aspects. And that's what makes Gutenberg. Gutenberg is what it is today because of these varied voices and these varied people contributing. So I'm stood up here, but I'm standing up here on behalf of all the amazing people that are producing Gutenberg. So you probably want to see inside Gutenberg, right? So this is Gutenberg. This is the editing experience with Gutenberg. But copy and pasting, that's always been a bit of an issue sometimes. You just can copy from a Google Doc and you can paste it in. And if you look at the source code, it's pretty clean, right? So you can do things like you can upload images and drag them. And you can do different sizes of images as well. And you can just edit the image in line there to just float it or put it to one side. And say you wanted to add some more content. You hear the inserter, you click, and you can search, or you can just add a block. And here I'm going to add another image. This is one way that I really like the big kind of banner images. That's something that you have in a lot of layouts, so a lot of people want those. I'm going through here. I'm going to get like a quote, because quotes are always good to have. And again, you can just paste it in, and it pastes it into a block. So we're going to pick a quote block here. And you can just say who said it. But quotes um, and some blocks have multiple styles. Here you can see how you can shorthand change the block to be different types. Say you thought, oh, no, that should be a list, or oh, no. But here you can change the style of the quote. So that is Gutenberg. And this is the demo. The demo comes with Gutenberg out of the box, and you can uh, load it up. Uh, there's also a feedback for link as well, and you can just start experimenting with Gutenberg. And here you can see lots and lots and lots of different blocks, different types of content. And here you can see there's also embeds as well, and search. So I really like this feature, the slash inserter, possibly needs a better name. Uh, <laughs> you can just quickly on the fly just type different blocks and they appear and it really creates a really fast workflow for writing um, so you can just create different things. Uh, also the placeholders, I'm going to get into these a little bit later, um, but the placeholders are great to maybe lay out a page as you're kind of thinking about what the structure would be. With the gallery block you can change uh, whether you have it wide, uh, same as images, so you can change how that is. And you can also do things like change the columns here. So you can just drag them and then change the columns to drag up or down. Um, and you can see the effect here. Which is quite a, it sounds simple, but it's something that we haven't necessarily been able to do, again, without lots of plugins or lots of combinations. And it really is a good way. So embeds play, just like um, any post. So you get that kind of near front experience. And I'm going to show you some things today that, that show you how to get even closer to that as well. This is a good way, you can have a button, call to action button, but it also will give a warning if the contrast is not correct as well. And then you can also change font size, and of course you need a big hand, and emojis work, of course. So one of the features which is pretty core cool to Gutenberg is the inspector. So the inspector is, if you see here on a paragraph block, the inspector is a way that you can get to like the extra properties of a block, and you can do things like drop cap, which is kind of, I think that's pretty great. And you can also increase or decrease the font. I took it to an extreme there. Of course, you don't want to have giant text like that. And here, you can see where your background. And I'm going to do something here, which is not, no, that's not accessible. And Gutenberg tells you that you really shouldn't be doing that. 
Um, so we're just trying to add these general nudges and bits of information to just make sure that whilst we're giving customization to people, they are aware of the impact of their customization. So one of the things that comes up a lot of time when talking about Gutenberg is themes. Gutenberg does not require a theme to work. But themes are an important part of WordPress. So how, what is the future going to hold for themes? Um, I can't exactly say that. Once Gutenberg's out, that will happen. But themes are going back to being a lot more about CSS. And they're not going to have so much of the weight that they currently do to compensate for the way that WordPress works. This is one way that you might see it. So you can actually, and this is in Gutenberg, you can actually see here where you can bring a style sheet in to the actual editor. So I'm going to reload this, and it looks like the front page. So it's a way that you can bring the front end experience back. Custom post types can also have placeholders and templates. So here you go here. Um, this is a custom post type. And then I'm going to load this up as well. So you see here a testimonial, and when you load it, this is what you get, which is a great for me user experience. So it just means that uh, you can add an image. I mean, everyone needs a testimonial from a puppy and a hat. And uh, it just for me, users just understand that rather than having an editor screen that looks nothing at all like the front, it's that first step towards um, both experiences making sense and being natural for users. And this is really exciting when you start to think about how you could have this in your code. At the core of Gutenberg is the concept of blocks. And because that's the way I think, I think this is Lego. Quite simply, you are being given a giant box of Lego and you can build different things. And when you make a collection of blocks, you're giving a kit of Lego. That's the best analogy I can find for it. And, and that's what you're doing. These content blocks add up to make something. And here is my artist rendition of uh, what a block actually looks like. Uh, they don't look like this, but <laughs> this, is, this is my visual brain and I, you, know, you have your HTML and you wrap it in a JavaScript core and then you have CSS on the top. And just like things like plugins and everything else, you enqueue it, you call it, you save for WordPress to use it and that's how that happens. One of the things that's really powerful that's coming the next release, which is either today or very soon going to be out, is reusable blocks. And this is pretty exciting. You can have a block and you can say it's reusable, you can give it a name, then you can save it, and then you publish it. And now I'm going to go to a completely different post and you'll be able to search for it and use it. And you can kind of see how this could be really useful for different people in different situations. A company, maybe you have a footer, maybe a call to action, maybe something that they use site-wide that before you'd have to have code or plug-in, and this way you can do it. And you can detach it as well from the situation. So what we really, really, really want people to do, uh, everyone who's involved in Gutenberg, we want people to create blocks. I want everyone here who can create a block, and everyone can create a block. And there's great documentation on it to really tweet and write blog posts and just let us know about these blocks. It doesn't have to be a block for a client. Just start experimenting, have fun. Make a Christmas block that isn't one yet. I would love to see one. Um, all these kind of things you can have because that's exciting. We're starting to explore this together. So I just wanted to go over a couple of uh, things that are said about Gutenberg from a myth perspective and just kind of set the record straight on those. Gutenberg will be able to be turned off. When 5.0 happens, your clients do not have to have the Gutenberg experience. We hope they do, and we hope that we've worked to get you in a position where that can happen, but you will not have to have that. And there's also a classic text block, which means that people can still have things like the tiny MC custom buttons, and they can all have these things working in that block. And there's a plugin called the Classic Editor, which is already up on the repository, already published, that you once you install that, then you won't actually have Gutenberg working. So we're trying to work on these easier paths for upgrading for people in an easier way, um, but also enabling people to maybe on test sites or as they do new projects enable Gutenberg as well. Metaboxes will be supported. It already is supported. But this is part of the way where we really want feedback. And everyone in this room is perfect to give us feedback. You're working 
on, uh, I don't call them edge cases, I call them stress cases, because you are working on some really intense projects and you can give great feedback to the Gutenberg team um, on what you are experiencing and what we should be responding to with regards to things like meta boxes. And there will be uh, something called extensibility, so you'll be able to hook into Gutenberg in different new ways. There's lots of interesting and exciting ways that you can hook into the interface that you never could before. And I'm kind of excited to see what you do with that. Custom host types, as I've shown, is going to be supported as well. In fact, it's more than supported. Uh, I remember when I was freelance, having something like those templates would have been incredible for me and my clients. And short codes will continue to work. Uh, there actually is a short code block. So if your clients use short codes and you want to go to Gutenberg, they're better to pop them in still. So you're absolutely going to be able to do that. But a lot of things that are short codes and widgets and even meta boxes over time will become blocks as we kind of explore this new format. Um, I'm also excited about what a block marketplace will be like when people start selling blocks. So I am going to tell you a quite a quick tale of the testing that's gone on. The reason being I want, hopefully, that you'll be able to go out and do some testing as well and give us feedback. The testing has been done all in public on the GitHub <coughs> repository. And we've had people jumping in, contributors from the community, who decided to help us by writing tests. So here's an example. Um, we would write the content script on GitHub. And then we'd iterate this and go through with different people getting feedback. And this has been really useful because it's meant that we've got it into hands of people that wouldn't before. And then we've had a call for testing. So the tests have been reported via GitHub, as I said. And also the comments have been visible to the team. So this has been this stream of feedback that's been growing and that's a great thing for people who are developing and designing on Gutenberg to get it flowing in front of them and really be able to respond to that. But by keeping it separate and not having issue by issue, keeping this feedback, we've also been able to pull out the things that are a bug and then go back and look at it and people have been doing amazing things like commenting on it and we've been able to use it as evidence for changes. So we've got the feedback even easier by having it within the plugin. And we've had the second round of tests, which is really, really great. Um, at WordCamp US, which I've just come back from, uh, we had 90 usability tests. Also, something that we've never had as a community, um, as far as I know, we had a testing section that all throughout the whole event was running usability tests for Gutenberg. And this was amazing. It became like this little pocket of people testing. And we, we took videos. We were getting feedback. And we, we have to process it all. <laughs> and as a community, there's so much resources that we have for that now. And it's really exciting to see, hopefully, that happening maybe at WordCamp Europe and at WordCamp US again. And we start being able to really test these features beyond the editor and really kind of uh, explore that as a community. So. 5.0 has been announced to be in April, in the state of the word. And this is when Gutenberg is going to be released. But what until then, right? You're here now. April's a few months. might seem only a few months, um, but it is a few months. Uh, so what can you do right now to help Gutenberg and to help 5.0 be as successful as it really can be if every single person in this room helps it? So we need to reach outside the bubble, quite simply. We've not necessarily been able to do that because the pace of the project has been really fast. And that's where, again, you come in. I'm really going to be using this as a call for you to help me here, and because uh, I know that you can. And outside of the confines of WordPress, we really need to test this. We need to test this with your clients. We need to test this with people who've never even heard of WordPress. Because if we want to be more than 29%, we need to be exploring outside that 29%. And I really love to get that feedback because it's important. Now, I have a lot of links at the end of this, which is I'm going to kind of skip through them. But there is my slide deck link because I really want to give you time to ask questions to me. But I'm just going to skip through. You can learn more at wordpress.org forward slash Gutenberg. And this page has recently been iterated on to really try and provide a bit more of the story of Gutenberg and some context. The documentation is ever growing, and that's great. And uh, issues and pull requests welcome on the documentation. You can get the plugin. And please, please run some tests. Anyone on any device, run those tests, because it's great to get that feedback. And we have feedback forms, and we have easy ways to get feedback. In fact, on this page, it even shows you how to do things like record your, your screen. If you are of, of that 
inclined to get, jump in to GitHub, that would be amazing. We need help with issues. And join the conversation uh, on uh, the WordPress.org Slack in Core Editor on Wednesday at 1700 UTC. We have the chat. And really, let's talk Gutenberg. Let's talk how you use WordPress as well, how you use it as an agency, an education, a startup, a business, an owner. We need to together to have more communication about how you're using things. Then we as a community can make the product that you really want. So thank you. My slide decks are here um, with all those links, which I'm hoping you dive into. But I'm hopefully going to have time for some questions. Feels a bit, a bit like a bobstay just being pushed off to start the track. Was that a good bobstay? Yes, yeah, okay. good bobstay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have questions from the floor straight away. What's the uh, what's the requirement for plugin builders and people building things like WooCommerce and the big form builders? How are they basically getting their products ready for a Gutenberg-based world? So there's been an exploration uh, picking up on WooCommerce. There's been an exploration uh, recently about WooCommerce, and they're just starting to look at it and explore it. I think. I would urge any plugin developer right now to start exploring where they would go. Um, and it's not for me to tell a plugin developer where to go. They're going to have a lot of opportunities to do blocks. Um, from a pure theoretical point of view, I would like more people to be following the, the block perspective because I think we can then level the playing field for users a little bit. Um, a good example is you'd be able to then, not just in the confines of your plugin interface, drop something in. You'd be able to just have a block, say a form, for example. Form block would be a very wanted block. Um, the block marketplace is something that I just see it's going to be a way, um, it's, it's just a term, I just see it's going to be a way that people will be able to, not just with plugins, but have suites of blocks and really start exploring what it is. And what we're giving is Lego. It's about people exploring then what they build from that. Um, day one, it's testing. It's getting that feedback. I can't say how every plugin is going to work. That's why we need to do this testing and we need this feedback. Um, as a project, we're trying to eliminate as many friction points as we can, have as many paths for upgrading as we can. Um, at some point, we're going to have to pick one of those paths for upgrading. Metaboxes is a good example. We have multiple different ways that we're thinking of doing things. Um, a good, uh, I'm a designer, so a good uh, user interface example is the toolbar. It goes by the block or it goes by the header and you can choose. And we're trying to give people these options of different things that they can do. And at some point, we're as a community going to say, well, this is the way the Gutenberg works in certain ways, and this is the path you're going to have to do. The flip side of that, and it's something that came up a lot at WordCamp US, is education. We need people to make a blog and document it, and write a blog post and give documentation. Um, and we need that experimentation because people are going to learn that way. So we need, we have the, the docs at the moment, but we really need people to explore it and give us feedback. Um, it's not a clear answer because the way forward isn't necessarily clear at the moment. What we're trying to do is, is find that way forward. Okay. Yeah, do we have more questions on the floor? Um, over there. Oh, uh, yeah, over there. So, no more. Come down. Hi there. And thank you very much for that talk. That's yeah. really interesting. It's great to see you know, things going forward and the future of work. Mm -hmm. so, um, two, sorry, two very good questions. Um, <laughs> the first thing, I think a lot of us are um, the agency owners and we mm -hmm. have lots of clients with an existing website. So I was a legacy website mm -hmm. when five point zero comes out on that day of that day mm -hmm. or what can we expect? It, it doesn't will good and by default, we're active by default. Um, mm -hmm. um, you know, plugin can be put active in advance to be able to control how things are moved out. And so second question Shall I answer that one first? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I've had a long flight. My memory might not be too good if we go to get straight to a second. Um, so you have a couple of options. One, you could network activate the classic editor plugin. Um, so you could do that. You could say that this plugin is default by all. All customers have to use this plugin, which kind of helps you there. Um, I used to be in your situation, and that's what I would have done if I'd had a multi site um, or a network. Uh, but that's what these next few months are about. It's, it's this conversation, right? I, I feel like I'm uh, repeating a bit, but I, that's what we need to do. We need to be having a conversation. Um, on day one, in theory, it will be turned on, but we may have a conversation as a community that, that has different discussions. And I think it's really, really important um, to both let the product finish or get to its complete point with Gutenberg, which is what 
those people working on Gutenberg will be doing, and also as a community to have a wider discussion about, okay, these are the paths of upgrade. This is what we do. Um, and, and then that will be it, and, and laying those out for people and giving them those. It's that education resource, and that's really what we're going into is a time of communication, education, and, and working together. Okay. Writing million websites, of course, so having that was PR about make sure websites don't break. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the cornerstones of WordPress is backwards compatibility, and Gutenberg is not trying to break that. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. So, a second question. Um, in terms of like page builders, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of us now use them because yep. client demands are going up. Um, you know, give you an example, I mean, you probably all know here, Visual Composer, it's not exactly. The, the microphones have been amazing so, today. Like, it's not exactly a great question, but, but people have their own solutions yeah. to do those, um, do columns and that much mm -hmm. more like, mm -hmm. control if you're layout. Um, I'm starting to go to both that's going to be um, a future. Mm -hmm. um, kind of thing, but in terms of, at the moment, it's very much blocks and text editing. Mm -hmm. um, how do you set going forward in terms of making it a real? Okay, so there actually is text columns already in Gutenberg, which is a bit of a future vision. Um, if you look at the way that they work, you can see them side by side, um, and, and that is a good start to think about if you add drag and drop to that. Um, that is page builders, I don't necessarily think that page builders will all go away. I think we're giving them a foundation to then build even better experiences. Um, I don't see it as a killer or anything of page builders, I see it as an enhancer. What we're doing is giving everybody this boost. Um, the best way I can describe it is a boost. We're giving them these blocks, we're giving them all these things that they can build with, um, a strong, consistent UI. And from a plugin developer point of view, that's amazing. You're going to be able to know these patterns. And there are design patterns, there's design docs in Gutenberg, uh, of how a block should work. And then you'll be able to build on those in what you create. So it's going to really provide that boost to build. Um, again, with day one, it's testing. It's finding out where those friction points are. Uh, it's, it's communication. There is communication happening with page uh, builders, and that needs to continue, and that needs to grow. Um, if you happen to use a page builder uh, extensively in your work, and you are finding friction points with that in Gutenberg, come on the issue, uh, come into the channel. And I'm not trying to force you to do anything, but that's exactly how we have these conversations. And, um, as a community, we make Gutenberg the best it can be and the easiest it can be for everybody in the community, both users and people who are building sites. I've kind of got a thought on that. Okay. So I, Page builders aren't static things right now. They're all, they've all got release schedules, they've all got, and page yeah. builders are in the same position as a lot of us are in this room. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing now Gutenberg distilling out as a thing. So they can see the lay of the land and we can mm -hmm. see the lay of the land. I would be very surprised if by the time that five comes around, yeah. quite a few of those page builders have got roadmaps out there saying the way they're going to mm -hmm. go. I would hope, and I think you're going to encourage it, and everybody working for it is going to encourage those roadmaps to be evolved in a, in, a, in a culture of discussion and sharing a direction yeah. that we want to and go. It was, and it was only one event, and it was not in this country, but at WordCamp US there were people who were page builders sitting down and trying to find out what this meant for them and having discussions. Yeah. And we're going to be doing that in... English word camps, meetups, everything. People are going to be having these discussions. Um, and you're completely right. They have release schedules. They're, a page builder is a page builder, but it is a plugin. It's exactly the same situation. I guess, well, first, Bill, um, is the ultimate goal of the upgrade path to replace letter boxes as we know them with blocks? So, so the, the you, you were saying what we have currently in Gutenberg, is it to yeah, replace yeah. metaboxes? I wouldn't have said that was a goal of Gutenberg. Okay. Um, Gutenberg is the goal, uh, well, actually, the editor, which I can talk about. Uh, the, the goal of the editor is the editing. Uh, there's lots of different things we've had to do uh, encompassing that, because it turns out editing was actually quite court central to WordPress yeah, yeah. and involved a lot of different things. Um, as an easy way I describe it is if you think about the media library. We didn't necessarily change much in the media library, but we've actually made some of the flows better through Gutenberg. And we haven't actually changed much in it. It's just better because it's wrapped in Gutenberg. Um, I think meta boxes, um, and this is purely my own opinion, I think over time, a lot of the complicated 
things that we do with Metaboxes and the way we've had to use them will be change and go back to be using blocks. Now, where that middle ground is, there's probably always going to be a need for everything that exists in WordPress. Yeah. That's why we have yeah. backwards compatibility. I guess um, it was just coming from a, the sense of where like, some of that that's that really useful to have within the content, maybe. Yeah. Um, but that you don't necessarily want that to be picked up in, in Yeah, and we, ha we have extensibility. So on the ellipses mm -hmm. of Gutenberg, I'm not going to boost the screen again, but yeah. there's a way that you can hook in there. And that's something that people have been exploring is uh, where maybe it was a meta box, like you were putting it down the bottom before. Maybe it needs to be contextual, right? Maybe it needs to hook into a menu in Gutenberg. Or maybe for users, it's better to have as a ellipses. Um, one thing that you have the potential to do now is not be limited and forced into a particular pattern of behavior by WordPress. We always say the WordPress way, right? This is changing and enhancing and giving us more of an open WordPress way. So where before your only option was just to stick it down the bottom because it's all I could do with mail boxes or maybe float it to the side or whatever. Now you have the opportunity to make it really a whole interface. So when the plugin turns on or when your customer comes, they don't know that there's like 12 different plugins on this with their 12 different interfaces. Yeah. They just know that this is WordPress and WordPress does these extra things because you made it for your client. Right? They, 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 I mean, they won't even know that. To them, their WordPress will be exactly what you've done. They won't see all this stuff. Um, but it is a change, right? It's thinking more from a product point of view, from an application point of view. Yeah, I was just wondering if, well, to be honest, even um, at the sort of data level, is all of that stuff going to be in the content? So uh, from the technical, I can't really, I'm not going to really super comment on the technical, but I would love so to, sorry, no, I would love to <laughs> connect you with someone that can do that. So yeah. if you find me at the end of this, I will take your name and I will absolutely connect you with people that can help you. Also pop into core editor. And then we can connect you on some of the technical level there. Okay, I think we'll take just one more from the floor, I think. Okay, so um, <coughs> gentlemen over there. Um, just towards the front, I think. Hi, it, it looks really exciting. <coughs> um, you mentioned a couple of things, uh, text columns, and you showed images uh, aligning them to the side. Uh, how will that work on mobile, on the front end? So Gutenberg uh, has a whole entire label for mobile. <laughs> um, front end, dependent on your theme. That's not what Gutenberg is dependent on. Um, on the admin, it already works better, but it can work even better than the, the mobile experience. And the mobile experience is something I'm super passionate about. I have two big loves in my life. That's media and mobile. Um, and I'm really, really passionate that we have a better than we have editing experience on mobile. Um, depending on what you add to Gutenberg, like if you have lots of blocks and extensibility, but we're, we're really setting some strong, good design patterns for mobile. Um, we can improve. Uh, if There's quite a few good first bug tickets in mobile, in fact. So if you want to help with those, that would be amazing as well. Um, and, and there's actually on the project, there's a, a good first task, I think it's called, um, just like any other GitHub project. And that's a way that people can just dip in and just kind of help us with. But mobile definitely is something. From that, testing is, is essential. Because mobile testing is like a whole new paradigm of randomness depending on what mobile device you're using. So it's really great if you have some weird mobile device or whatever, that's great to give us feedback on that as well. And on the front end, it's dependent on the theme. So it's Gutenberg does some styling, but ultimately the front end of your site today will be dependent on the theme that you are using for, for what it looks like. Um, Gutenberg is not going to get in the way of what your theme does. Um, in fact, it scaled back a lot of its opinionation on what it does on the front end. Um, where that happens in the future, we don't know. Um, that's something it was announced. There's going to be a Gutenberg theme. I think that's what we're calling it. Uh, for, um, so. Whatever, that will probably be a good template for the future. I, um, that's going to be way after the editor, because we're going, we're having the editor, the whole year is Gutenberg in 2018. Um, and it's going to start with the editor, then it's going to go customization, and then it's going to finish with a lovely theme on top as a nice little, little bow to the <laughs> end of the year. Um, and that depends. I would say the the feeling I have and, and the thing I'm passionate about and other people are, 
um, and it's very like from my own headspace, is that mobile gets a better experience, that we don't have to say to someone, well, you're not using an app, so you can't update your post, or well, if you're trying to do it on mobile, you can't do this. I want, I want the mobile experience for WordPress to be better. Um, and if you're passionate about mobile, please come and help us, because that's something I adore when people are passionate about mobile. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um,